And I will call State of Wisconsin versus Logan T. Kruckenberg Anderson. 16-year-old Logan Kruckenberg Anderson is charged as an adult with first-degree intentional murder and hiding a corpse in the shooting death of his own newborn daughter. Mr. Kruckenberg Anderson appears via Zoom from the juvenile detention center where he is incarcerated. Prosecutors say on January 5th, Kruckenberg Anderson's 14-year-old girlfriend gave birth to their child in a bathtub in her Albany, Wisconsin home, naming her Harper. In his initial statement to police, the teenager says he and his girlfriend decided they could not have the child in their life, and they agreed that he would get rid of the infant by simply dropping it somewhere. Kruckenberg Anderson says he then placed the baby in a backpack and left. He first told police he gave someone $60 to take the baby to an adoption agency. When interviewed a second time, he admitted leaving baby Harper in the woods. Police would later find the newborn with two bullet wounds to the head. Kruckenberg Anderson is being held on $1 million bond. As of now, the mother has not been charged with any crime. It all comes down to what she knew and when she knew it. So, you know, she could be an accomplice all the way to the first degree intentional homicide um, that's been charged or really any other crime, uh, particularly if she's directing it. Court documents list the young mother as juvenile witness number two. At Kruckenberg Anderson's hearing, her attorney, Andrea Winder, referred to her as victim. And victim number two appears um, via Zoom as well as with her attorney, Andrea Winder. Winder refused to comment on the case, telling Court TV, I represent the victim. I'm frustrated my 14-year-old client is an innocent 14-year-old girl and has to relive what she went through. We are asking for privacy for her at this point. Nothing in official documents suggests the mother ever reported the baby missing. And it wasn't until January 9th four days after baby Harper was born, that her father informed police the baby was missing. We don't really know what she did or didn't do. Um, and that could be by design as well, because the prosecution might be holding her back knowing that she's a witness. Um, and there might be some consideration there, uh, you know, to get her to cooperate in some way or fashion. This was an execution of, of a little baby. Two bullet holes in her head. I, I don't understand this. Let, let me bring in uh, Court TV anchor Michael Ayala. Mm -hmm. Michael, this is it's disturbing on many levels. And, and Unbelievable. We're, we have to acknowledge that. Let's, let's talk about the mom for a minute. I mean, mm -hmm. she's just 14 years old herself. Yeah. Uh, what do we know about her? Vinny, think about it. 14 years old. What did you know at 14? You know, it, it's just, it's, it's mind-boggling stuff. I mean, basically, that's really all we know. They're keeping a lot of that close to the vest. She's two years younger than the defendant, right? So that may play into her not being charged. They need her a little bit to talk about what happened. So maybe they're holding her back as a witness. Um, I do know that, in fact, uh, she is, according to the statement of the defendant, that he exonerates her. He says she didn't know what was going on. They, they thought, or she thought, he was leaving the house with the baby to leave them somewhere. And, you know, the, the coolest irony of all in this case, Vinny, is that there's a law in Wisconsin that allows folks, within 72 hours of a baby being born, you can take that baby to the hospital, you can take it to police, fire station, and leave it there, no questions asked, anonymously. They can't come after you, they can't come back. If you let them know you're not coming back for that baby, they will take care of it, the state will be responsible for it. So there were options for the, these kids, and they just didn't know or just couldn't think right at that age. Yeah, I, you know, it's, and I don't, I don't know how you, but how do you get from there to an execution in the woods? That's the, that's the leap. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't think I'll, and we'll ever understand it. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that, Father. So what's next now for him? Well, as you mentioned, how do they get there? Well, he will be evaluated for mental issues. Maybe there's some mental issues there. Uh, he does have a preliminary hearing scheduled for February 5th. But really, the first thing on the agenda for his attorney is to try to get that case out of adult court. There are major differences, Vinny, in the way juvenile court and adult court treat offenders. Obviously, adult courts, they focus on the punishment. 
while juvenile courts, for those under the age of 17, really try to focus on helping the defendant and giving them another chance at a productive life. I want you to take a look at this graphic I put together just to give you a sense. If he's convicted of first-degree murder in adult court, it is mandatory life in prison. If he's convicted of the same offense in juvenile court, the longest he could be in prison would be until the age of 25, or nine years since he's 16. If he's convicted of a lesser offense, let's say he gets second-degree murder, or they convict him of second-degree murder in juvenile court, the max is just three years. I mean, so major differences there. Um, but this type of case with these facts, it's going to be very difficult to get it moved to juvenile court. Absolutely. I mean, if the facts are, you know, it's the way that this, this killing was done. I mean, it's, it's execution style, taken yeah. out into the woods, a gun to a baby's head. Yes. So what are the chances here? Now, let, let's talk about that because there's such a big difference here. Uh, nine yeah. years, he's back, he has his whole life. Um, what are the chances of getting removed to juvenile court? Mm. Slim and none, Vinny. Uh, to get the case removed to juvenile court in this case, it's going to be a two-step process. Under Wisconsin law, if you're charged with first-degree murder and you're 15 years of age or older, the case is automatically under a adult court jurisdiction. To get it removed, the defense has the burden now to show by clear and convincing evidence that a lesser charge is appropriate, like, let's say, second-degree murder. That would make you eligible to have it moved back to juvenile court. If you pass that hurdle, then you go to the next step, where the defense will have to prove by just a preponderance of the evidence, a little bit lower standard, of these three criteria. Number one, the juvenile could not receive adequate treatment in the criminal justice system. So, of course, that mental health thing comes back uh, if he does need help. Transferring the jurisdiction would not depreciate the seriousness of the offense. That's where they're going to run into problems here. And retaining jurisdiction is not necessary to deter juveniles or other juveniles from committing the violation. So again, you know, unless the defense uncovers some serious mental issues in this pretrial examination, it's going to be a very difficult task and very and, and highly unlikely. You know, we saw in the Slenderman case that we've covered, the 14-year-old girls there that they stabbed another girl, the judge there refused to send that case back to juvenile court because the crime was so serious. And fair to say here, Vinny, considering who the victim was, this one is a lot worse. It is worse. It is, it is really bad. Michael Ayala, uh, appreciate that analysis and, and insight. Thank you so much.